Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. In the line of duty, police officers routinely confront the unknown, but some encounters transcend the realm of the ordinary and venture into the uncharted territory of the supernatural. When faced with such brushes with the inexplicable, it's not surprising that many of these officers feel hesitant to reveal them, as doing so risks their professional reputations. The following are two more chilling stories that detail extraordinary encounters between police officers and the otherworldly, demonstrating that sometimes the line between the normal and the paranormal is more fragile than one might think. The Grey Man Although typically supernatural occurrences are merely eerie or perhaps on occasion even terrifying, rarely have they been known to cause direct bodily harm to individuals. Even poltergeists, which are well known for their physical manifestations, tend to move objects while residents are away from home, seeming to avoid any direct confrontation. However, the following incident, which occurred in Santa Maria, California, during the mid-80s, stands out amongst a handful of exceptions to this rule, and is the culmination of numerous other accounts of bizarre sightings and events in the rural area leading up to it. A substantial number of local residents claim to have seen a tall figure standing outside their houses, with some of these properties having experienced recent break-ins. The situation escalated when a terrified homeowner phoned the police late at night, frantically informing the dispatcher that a seven-foot, grey-haired man was attempting to enter his house. The call was initially dismissed since the man was known to be an excessive drinker. However, as protocol demanded, the dispatcher soon sent a patrol car to investigate. The dispatcher remained on the line with the caller, attempting to gather more details. The man grew increasingly frightened, insisting that the grey figure was observing him through his windows and intended to harm him. Concerned, the dispatcher requested a description of the figure, but the caller could only make out a few key features, saying that he was tall, slender, with an oversized head and massive black eyes. Believing the caller might be at risk, the dispatcher instructed him to lock himself in a room until the officers arrived. As the dispatcher provided these directions, a deafening buzzing static filled the line, intensifying until the caller shrieked and the call disconnected. The dispatcher promptly notified the responding officers to prepare for a violent situation. Arriving shortly after, a male and female officer inspected the residence. It was an aged, wooden, two-storey building with a white exterior that was flaking due to UV damage and a parched front yard. There was no one outside the house, nor any indication that anyone was lurking nearby. As the two officers advanced on the house, they heard the caller's horrifying screams coming from just beyond the door. They shouted their identities as police officers and attempted to enter, only to find the door immovable. In their report, they mentioned that the door wasn't secured by a lock, but rather seemed to be held shut by an unknown force. Suddenly, an intense buzzing began inside the house, growing louder while the man's screams reached a piercing level. Recognising the need to enter the house somehow, the officers resolved to force their way in. They took turns kicking the door, which, although appearing to be merely wooden, resisted their attempts, as if reinforced by some sturdier material. Eventually, they managed to break it down, which caused the buzzing and screaming to cease. Upon entering, they didn't find the man behind the door. Instead, they discovered blood smeared on the floor and walls, accompanied by peculiar bloody footprints. With weapons drawn, the officers cautiously explored the house, inspecting every corner and room. Upstairs, they detected movement and the sound of a muffled voice, as if someone was attempting to shout but was being silenced. Treading carefully, they ascended the stairs, 
weapons prepared for any confrontation. On the landing, they observed more bloody footprints and a trail of blood as if from a person being dragged, which led into a room where they could, clearer still, hear the stifled voice. An officer opened the door to find the homeowner bound, gagged, soaked in urine and displaying eyes filled with sheer terror. According to the officer's report, the man was covered in lacerations, as if assaulted with a razor, and yet it seemed done so with a particular intent in mind. The cuts encircled his eyes and traced the contours of his organs and vital points, as if the perpetrator intended to delineate specific areas. The man seemed almost hysterical with fear, rambling incoherently. When they removed his gag and untied him, he burst into tears, expressing gratitude for saving his life. He alleged that the grey man sought to abduct him. Subsequent investigations revealed that the caller was trapped in the room for a minimum of four hours. However, there were no indications of forced entry, fingerprints or other evidence of someone else ever being inside the house. The only anomaly was the unidentifiable, strange footprints in the blood. The victim claimed that he had contacted the police five hours prior to their arrival and was told by the dispatcher that a patrol car was en route. The officers stated that it took them approximately 30 minutes to reach the house from their previous location and about 10 minutes to locate the man upon arrival. Mysteriously, over four hours had somehow elapsed between their arrival and the man's discovery. The victim eventually took his own life several years later, leaving a note detailing how they wouldn't leave him alone, and warning the officers who found him that they were after them too, but also expressing gratitude for his rescue. The officers had since reported occasional feelings of being watched, especially during particularly dark nights. Code 5150 In California, police use the Code 5150 to flag calls related to psychiatric issues that may require hospitalisation. Sometimes these situations can be quite unsettling, while other times they outright defy explanation. In the following incident, an officer responded to a 5150 call at a home on the edge of a town. The dispatcher relayed that a woman believed her son was experienced a drug-induced psychotic episode. The officer arrived at a typical suburban residence situated in a somewhat run-down yet untroubled neighbourhood. He was cautious since such calls could pose genuine threats to his personal safety. As he approached the house, a distraught woman in her 50s met him, expressing that something was wrong with her 20-year-old son. Upon pressing for further details, she explained that he had taken some sort of drug and refused to enter his room because, quote, an old man is hanging there. Despite her attempts to clarify, he kept repeating the same phrase. The woman was too frightened to check on him, since her son frequently invited drug-addicted friends who scared her. Although she had dealt with her son's drug-induced states in the past, she worried that this time might be different and pleaded with the officer to help. Empathising with the woman, but considering the situation to be a fairly straightforward matter, the officer decided to speak with the son. The young man was evidently under the influence of a stimulant. His pupils were dilated, his breathing was rapid, and his body was drenched in sweat. The officer struggled to get the son's attention, as he seemed to be looking through him rather than at him, as if something else occupied the officer's space. Eventually, the young man claimed that a spirit informed him that her father, adorned in military attire, had hanged himself in the room. Skeptical yet disconcerted by the son's conviction when describing the spirit, the officer decided to call for backup. If fatal self-harm had indeed occurred, he didn't want to face it alone. 
He questioned the son once more to verify it wasn't merely a bad drug experience, but the story remained consistent and the son insisted that entering the room would disturb the grandfather. The officer then heard an odd thud in the adjacent room, loud enough to cause chills to run down his spine. His radio informed him that backup would arrive in five minutes. Eager to address the noise, the officer, despite the young man's objections, opened the door to the room, discovering nothing unusual. No body, no old man, only a typical 20-year-old's room with band posters, a messy bed and an ashtray filled with the remnants of something more herbal than cigarette butts. Shrugging it off, the officer went downstairs to inform the mother of his findings. As he was explaining that there was no cause for concern, a senior officer arrived and interrupted him. The senior officer pulled him aside with a grave demeanour. When asked about the matter, the senior officer whispered that when he was new to the force, he had investigated a suicide case involving an older man who had hanged himself in the same room where the son was staying. The officer shuddered but dismissed it as a prank, knowing that older colleagues often played tricks on newcomers. The senior officer insisted he was serious and suggested the younger officer verify the story for himself. Both officers reassured the mother that the only issue was her son's drug use and then promptly left since there was nothing more to be done. The sorrowful man's story lingered in the officer's mind and a few days later he decided to search the case archives. After some digging he found the record he sought. Years prior a World War II veteran had suicided at that address. The man had dressed in his army fatigues before taking his own life. His daughter had discovered him and the trauma left her forever changed. She too took her own life in the same house a few years later.